All right, so this is the 50 inch high sense. I'm gonna show you what it's doing right now. So I'm gonna press the power button and you can see it turns on and you see that red blinking light right there. And then we're shutting off. And basically it doesn't matter what I do, what I press, uh, it's not turning back on. All right, so I turned the TV around. I just took out the screws. Just take it out with a regular old Phillips. Now I unplugged it and I let it sit for about 10, well, about 30 minutes. Uh, most of these televisions have a built-in uh, discharge. So what we're gonna be doing, what the problem with this television is, is right here, these two, these two things right here. Uh, they are called capacitors. And as you can see, the tops are popped out. Okay, so that's a blown capacitor. Here's two other capacitors. You see they're nice and flat on top. So the reason why our television is blinking like that um, on this specific is the capacitors. So we're gonna replace them and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So this is the stuff that we're gonna use today. This is the Phillips screwdriver that I use to take the screws out. Uh, this is a pair of wire cutters. These are some new capacitors. You want to make sure that you order the exact same kind of capacitor. Um, do a little research. It can be a higher voltage, but it can't be a lower voltage. So these are a 22 UF and a 250 volt. And I got those right off Amazon. And then you're going to need a soldering iron soldering tool. Again, I just got this for 10 bucks off Amazon. So this soldering iron comes with a few different tips. On it right now is a pretty pointy one. So um, I've kind of decided between, I think I'm going to use this bigger one. And this one comes with the tin. Now I'm gonna link down below a much better video on how to do this. So uh, this video is just for entertainment purposes. You not learn from me. Again, I'm just showing you that anyone can fix their own television. I ended up using just a flathead screwdriver to lift up these tabs. Each of these is attached kind of a different way. One pinched, one had like a little plastic lever on top. And then this last piece I couldn't really figure out, so I just ended up unscrewing that part of the circuit board. Be very careful touching a circuit board. Anything with a power cord does carry an electric current even after it's unplugged. So you'll see this one still zaps. To discharge the circuit board, we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and just run it along the hot spots. I don't really know anything about television, so I just drag the screwdriver over the whole thing. Do this everywhere. Holy shit. Wait, do you see any more X's like that? I felt it on my arm. I felt it on my face. <laughs> that seems good. Maybe we can like let it sit for a few more minutes. I just like, it's not like that. Okay. <laughs> it went to the screwdriver. What is that? That's where it popped. That would have been a hole in your hand. I don't know. All right, guys. So this is the part that I took off. And again, as you just saw, I discharged it. It's right there. That seems to be where all the capacitors were. See that little plus there? So, and then over here, this is where we got that big pop. So as long as you're discharging those, it seems to be okay. okay so these are the two we're replacing. And you wanna see on this side? So they're right here. And again, you just saw us already discharge it. So I'm gonna heat up this soldering iron and get started. All right, so this is my setup. I've got the capacitor just resting against this toaster oven. Here's my soldering iron. I've got it set to 260 degrees Celsius. Um, Google says that's what you should solder capacitors at. That way they can stay below one, 105 degrees. I've uncoiled my tin and I've wet just this regular kitchen sponge. 
So this soldering iron is set at 260 degrees Celsius. That's about over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a very hot, you wanna be careful with this. You don't wanna to touch it. I'm going to clean it, I'm gonna clean it. it with a little bit of tin to say you should solder wet. And then uh, let's just do it, can you see? Okay, so you want to touch the board a little more carefully. Oops. I might say glue this more. It's not coming off yet. Okay, that's I go. I'm gonna clean it again, clean it off, re wet it. Hmm. It's like not getting hot. I feel like I'm actually just like making it hotter. Okay, got it. All right, I just want to let you guys know that this is incredibly difficult. It's not as hot as maybe some of the people are using theirs. Because it's like taking more than like four seconds. All right, now let's get the new ones in. Here, I'm just trimming the length of the wire on the capacitors. So the positive side is on this side. As you can see, we got a negative right here. That's a negative. See that negative? That's, so this is negative. Right here is negative. This is positive. So right here, there's a little positive symbol right here. So. I'm going to clean the tip, and then I'm just going to wet it, and then again, make sure the negative, we'll do the bottom one first, and on the inside, okay, we got it. So I did struggle here quite a bit, I think maybe my iron wasn't as hot as the video that I posted down in the description box. So it wasn't really melting it fast enough and it was a struggle to get it in. If you're an amateur like I am, I recommend just cutting it shorter and I do that with the second one and you'll see it goes a lot smoother. Google told me that I should only use 260 degrees Celsius and only hold it for a maximum of four seconds. Um, I think not to damage the capacitor. So I really struggled in keeping it long enough to melt the tin, but not too long where I was damaging the capacitor. This second one, I cut a lot shorter and it ended up making it a lot easier. Wet it. Again. Negative side on the inside. Okay, well that one, see that was much easier. So I'm gonna just call it a day. <laughs>
like we fixed the television. See you guys later in the next video. Bye.